It's still unclear what the fate of Marine Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller will be. But one thing is clear, he's accomplished the goal of sparking a conversation about accountability among the upper ranks and the ruling class. On August 26, hours after a suicide bomber outside the Kabul airport killed 13 American service members and 150 Afghan civilians, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller posted a video on social media demanding accountability from his military leadership. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down and none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying, we messed this up. The decorated battalion commander knew full well what he was risking. I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. Well, his video went viral, attracting a lot of support and debate about his decision to break rank. He continued the conversation even after he was put under a gag order, saying that he felt this was a path he needed to walk. Last Monday, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller was taken to prison, placed in pretrial confinement. Since then, his parents have been activated. So instead of one Scheller, there are now two more making their voices heard. Kathy and Stu Senior, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For thank you, Cindy. I know it's been an absolute whirlwind for you. The last week probably feels like a year. How are you holding up and where are things at right now? Well, I told a friend of mine last night, I'm not in prison. I'm tired, but I'm committed to help our son. We're proud of our son. We're proud of America for standing up, finding their voice and speaking out. So we're, we're inspired. I, uh, I go on uh, Stewart's donor page every hour to read positive comments from donors, people that are donating $5, $10. And those are hardships for people. And they, they're words of encouragement for Lieutenant Scheller and for mom and dad are what are keeping us going. Yeah, it is pretty remarkable. There, it's getting close to $2 million and from over 22,000 individual Americans who have donated. So I'm sure that is helping oyster some spirits. Is he aware of all of that? We have still been unable to speak with him. I don't know if his attorney has, has told him that or not. The money amount is just staggering and amazing, but it is the grassroots movement of the people who say, you know, I have... And I'm, I'm donating $20, and I'm going to fill that this month. Classic Stuart. He said, I don't want the money. We'll give it to charity or something. And, you know, Mom and I laughed. He did the same thing, obviously, with his pension and his benefits. And we're going, you have a wife <laughs> and three children. Just You have three children to, to go through school. You have um, legal expenses. But, you know, that's, that's his character. So right now... He is still in the brig for pretrial confinement. We don't know exactly when the hearing will be. It was supposed to have been Thursday, but that was postponed because there's negotiations. I know some members of Congress got involved. So what do you know right now? We, all we know is that hopefully, I think, think the court is on Tuesday and Thursday. So hopefully they reconvene Tuesday. Congressman Louis Gohmert from Texas traveled from D.C. to Jacksonville, Camp Lejeune, and played a tremendous role in uh, working between Stewart's defense attorneys and the United States Marine Corps to get them to agree to not drop charges and to go away for the weekend and begin discussions on an amicable settlement. We've also been told he probably won't get out of jail next Tuesday. So they've lowered our expectations. The, our, uh, his attorney has asked that Tuesday's hearing is made public. Don't know if it will or not, but Kathy and I will be traveling to North Carolina. 36 representatives signed a letter and sent it to the Marine Commandant. I'm asking Americans, ask your congressman and senator, is their name on that letter and did they sign? Let, let me ask you this. So. He knew when he was making those videos that there'd be consequences, that he was breaking, breaking rank, and he explained, you know, why he felt 
from his conscience that it was necessary to do that. So what are you asking people to get behind? Our reason behind that is that he is an American war hero. Um, he has fought for his men and women that follow him. He's fought on the battlefield for them. I believe he's still, he has risked his life. He is now risking his livelihood for them. He saw a misjustice happening at the top, and he felt that they should be held accountable for it. And yes, there, there, there is a chain of command, and there should be punishment for that. But that chain of command that we saw broken, we also just saw broken on the Senate floor. That chain of command was broken. Our son has been given a gag order and thrown in prison and strip searched and thrown in isolation and is facing prison for breaking his chain of command. And I am wondering, I'm fine if that's ex the exact punishment that is taken out all the way across the board for anyone who breaks command. So Stewart, Stewart asked for accountability from his senior leaders. Look, we had senators and representatives for two days grill these senior leaders, and it's evident that they are not accepting responsibility or accountability for their failures. One of the things that struck me in his videos was this. He said, Accepting accountability would do more for service members and PTSD and struggling with purpose than any other transparent piece of paper or message. It seems to me that this is really, you know, what was behind it, what was motivating him. Absolutely, and that is my sweet spot right there, because so many of our military members, we've had 7,000, over 7,000 troops die within the last 20-year war. And depending on how the data is juggled, we have somewhere between 30,000 and 100,000 service members have committed suicide. Those are staggering numbers. And I want people to think of that. Somewhere up to 100,000 of our service people have been mistreated or misdiagnosed or not helped by our military. They should be able to recognize these signs. They should be able to come forward and instead of reprimanding or shaming or pressuring, pressuring them, they should be able to reach out and we should have something set in place to help these people. And he, our son, Stuart, works a lot with organizations to stop and help soldiers and military people with PTSD. He does work through a hero organization. He has a 50 acre farm out in North Carolina where they have people come and, and talk and, and gather and, and support each other um, across all ranks and, and all branches. He also did podcast helping um, military moving from civilian life where they are from right. military life where they were important and they had a purpose and then they come out and they don't. And so he was telling them to follow their dreams, start their entrepreneurial business while they're still in the service. So when you get out, you have a purpose. He was working very hard to help prevent some of these suicides. So he needed accountability for these people that he cares about. They needed accountability so that they knew that it meant something, that this war wasn't for nothing. We can tell you that hundreds, if not thousands, of people that wrote to say, I was in a really dark place, really dark place, the way this war ended, wondering, was it all worth it? But your words and your courage to stand forward saved my life that night. And I know that as a mother, and I say as Americans, we need to hold our military accountable for not thinking of these people. We've lost so many more than we did in the war. Let me ask you this, too. I watched, he's got four videos, um, and he said at some point, you know, that through this process, he's really evolved. What do you see as parents when you watch them? Well, it was hard for us to watch them because we had no idea what was going on at first. And we were like, oh, my. Then he'd see his anger and his rage and his frustration. But the military was applying lots of pressures that the rest of the world didn't see. And I'm not going to go into all of that right now. But they were applying unseen pressure behind him to make him crack. Make him look unstable. It was hard because, uh, you know, like America, we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. We were worried for him. We're parents. We were scared. And, and um, 
And so all we knew to do was to love him, to support him. The day he lost his command, we got in the car and we drove 12 hours to North Carolina just to be in the same community with him.